Hey everybody, it's Pete. Good morning. Welcome to today's episode of Stocks for Breakfast. It is Thursday, April 16th, 2020. I say that with a little bit of melancholy. If it wasn't for what's going on in the world today, I would actually be having my wedding 30 days from now, uh, but it's been postponed. Uh, we're still trying to scramble around to see if we could stick to the date, but uh, wish me some luck. Hopefully uh, everything will uh, work out well so that everybody's happy. Um, Got some really good questions, uh, both stocks that we're going to review today that you guys and girls actually put into the um, into the comments for the last couple of days. Um, some really good ones too. And what's interesting is stocks that I haven't watched in a while, you guys are calling out to me, uh, specifically the pot stocks have gotten my interest a little bit more. We, we reviewed TLRY a couple of days ago, maybe it was yesterday, I don't know, the days are all blending together. Um, and now we're going to look at another one today um, that also looks just as interesting. Um, what I want to talk about today, though, in a little bit more detail is structure. Structure for how to set up your trade, structure for how to set up a game plan. Um, and I, I want to make the distinction between simple and easy because <laughs> there's a big difference. What I, what I want to get clear is... Um, the better structure you have to find ideas, meaning you actually have a strategy that says, this is exactly what I'm looking for. The better structure you have for that, the easier it is to find those ideas or to clearly say, I don't see anything. So for example, in yesterday's day trading environment in, in the community, uh, in, in, the, um, in the room, it was kind of boring. We actually didn't have a lot to do uh, there were a few shorter term trades here or there, but I was very, very inactive. I didn't trade that much because based on my structure of how I look at everything, which is my, my, my trading plan, um, I just didn't see, I didn't feel that it, the risk uh, was worth the smaller profit potential that was on the table. Um, so I just wanted to make that clear. I also forgot to mention, I, I had said that there was a trade that uh, I missed which was uh, which was a um, a gap down in in a stock that was bullish and has been bullish for a while, um, and I just missed it for whatever reason. I, I guess I didn't set an alert for it. I don't know. Sometimes <laughs> every, nobody's perfect, right? Um, I, I I would just want to mention with that stock today. We'll go to the chart really quick. Uh, Stacy actually had mentioned that she um, she made a keyboard error and. Uh, had the wrong amount of shares. Stacy, I feel your pain. I did, <laughs> I've done that a few times, um, especially way back in the day. I don't know if you got how long everybody here has been trading, but um, back in 2000, I worked for the Attain ECN uh, and they actually had their own execution software and it would go down all day. I mean, this is still in the early days of really big, aggressive NASDAQ day trading. Um, and we'd have, you know, sometimes 10, 20, 30,000 share orders that were just like stuck in the universe. We had no idea whether or not we actually got filled or not. So you're watching prices go back and forth and you had no idea. Am, am I in the trade? Am I not in the trade? And sometimes, you know, they'd come back and light up. And you, 10 times out of 10, it seemed like when your software was down, it never worked in your favor. But <laughs> uh, Stacy, I feel your pain. Um, so I want, the points that I want to cover today is <clears throat> very quickly getting back into uh, structure. I'm, I'm actually surprised that nobody has commented that I don't use moving averages on most of my charts when I do the game plan. Um, somebody had mentioned today, I, I apologize, I don't remember the name, um, about using the 8 and 21 period moving average, which I know is very common. Um, I know my friend Scott does that. Um, the moving averages that you use are, are kind of like, you know, it's kind of like a baseball glove. Um, I love baseball. I've played it my whole life. And, you know, once you're breaking in a glove, uh, you know, it just feels right, you know, and, and moving averages and how you set up your trading screen, all of that is basically the same thing as well, right? You move one thing off to the screen or you get a different monitor and everything seems like you're looking at a completely different market, right? Um, so I just want to explain very clearly that, uh, and briefly, that um, how, which, however you do your game planning in trading, it's important that you do what's comfortable for you. So there's no really right or wrong way to do it. There's really no right or wrong moving averages. It's, it's what you're comfortable with. Yesterday's video, I mentioned uh, a way of booking profits or, or trailing your stop loss uh, on particular trades um, using moving averages and shorter term moving averages. We talked about a five exponential and a 10 
simple moving average on a shorter time frame to manage those winning trades or whatever, whatever time frame is your main trend. But when I do my game planning, um, I don't want the trend of the moving averages or the uh, where price is compared to the moving averages to affect whether or not I want to be long the stock. And I think to me personally, that's where, that's really where I make the distinction between being a chart reader and being a tape reader. A tape reader is a trader who's looking to put the pieces together. And I think a lot of people miss, sometimes stocks are absolutely doing nothing. They're, they're in a tight range, they're doing nothing, uh, but they feel like there's a trade because it's above or below the moving average. Or maybe the, you know, the 20 just crossed up over a certain price action uh, and they feel now there's a trade there. But if you really pull yourself back and look at the price action without moving averages, um, you'll see that, what am, I, what am I doing? There's nothing going on here. That's the right price. There's nothing for me to do until it gets out of that price. And you could, you could really get a, a feel for these. Like if you're looking at some of the um, airline stocks or the cruise line stocks right now, sure, there's, selling, there's heavy selling for obvious reasons. There has been. But now they're kind of just stuck in a range and, and everybody's just kind of guessing what the next move is going to be. And quite honestly, there's no reason to guess. Let price action tip its hand to the next trade and then hop on board. Let, <laughs> let, let the market tell us what's going on and then wait for the easy money. I, I remember a quote, it might have been in one of the Market Wizards books, I'm not 100% sure, but it was Jim Rogers who definitely said it. Um, he said, I wait for the trades where money's laying in the corner and I go pick it up. I don't know if there's a better description of what good trading is about. It, it just basically means I have a very simple way of finding whether or not I want to be in a trade. And unless I see that, I don't get involved. So for me personally, when I'm looking at the charts, and I'm specifically talking about my game planning, when I'm looking at my game planning, I, I, want to, I just want to read the price action. I want to read the individual candlesticks. Was it big green, big red? Was it an indecision candlestick? Is it well bid, well offered? Is it inside? Are there any significant levels coming up? Is order flow obvious? What is moment, if there is well bid or well offered, how many days in a row is that occurring? Then and only then will I decide to go to maybe look at the moving averages because let's face it, they, they are and tend to be self-fulfilling prophecies where uh, everybody's looking at the same ones, so to speak. You know, 8 and 21 is a little bit different, but the majority of people do look at the 20, the 50, the 100, the 200. I generally, when I do put them on the screen, you'll see them in the top corner. It's the 20, the 50, and the 200. For me personally, they represent the short-term, intermediate, and long-term trends as defined in Dow theory, which goes back 100 years. Um, but really, to break all Dow theory down without making it complicated, it's basically that there's always three trends going on at one time. And the general consensus is um, the intermediate trend is kind of that swing trading trend where you're trading that one um, a little bit more... Um, uh, what's the word? I don't want to say consistency, consistently. You trade it consistently because that, that's the trend that goes, that goes off over weeks. It's a little bit easier to read what's happening over weeks. Dow theory says that the short-term trend is the day-to-day -day fluctuations, uh, and that can be kind of hard to read, which is the elite level of trading, you know, the day traders or, or the micro swing traders, I guess you might say, whether in today and out tomorrow. Uh, I remember back in the day, there was a, a, a firm called Schoenfeld, and one of their main strategies, and they, they were very big back then, uh, one of the main strategies was, let's say a stock closed near its high on the day, they would buy on the close and sell on the open the next day. That, that was literally their strategy. They, they obviously other stuff into the, into the game plan. Don't just trade off what, you know, just closing strong. Um, uh, but that was their strategy. So that, you know, there's, there's the micro time frame as well, and even micro micro time frame on the day trades. So my point is there's a lot of different ways to slice up the market, but what I'm showing you is after 20 years of trading, for me personally, and I rattled off a whole bunch of different things there, I want to know what's actually going on in the price action before I say it's above or below a moving average. Because it, here, And here's the key. Sometimes when you're looking at moving averages, they can influence your decision when actually nothing's going on. So, even, so be sure if you're moving averages, they're actually trending, not just going sideways. Because that's kind of the whole point of moving average. It's an average. Um, but sometimes you could look at a chart and be like, there's nothing going on here. And there's no reason to even look at the moving averages because it's going sideways. And those are the trades that you should, you know, kind of wait for the market to tip its hand. We mentioned Boeing yesterday, BA. Um, 
consolidating down into a really tighter, tighter pennant. And um, there's no reason to look at the moving average there. Price action is telling you it's just, it's consolidating, 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 very similar to an inside candle. It's just happening, instead of it happening over two days, it's happening over a couple of weeks now. That's going to eventually break out of that. It's eventually going to have an expansion of volatility, and there's no reason for us to get involved in that mess until until it has a large volume candle, which we'll, we call fuel. So if you could visualize, I have two types of candlesticks that either start or finish a trend. One of them is called fuel, which obviously I, may, I created the name to visualize for myself. Fuel means it's starting a new trend, which obviously large body candlestick, a lot of volume, and then goes well bid. And the other one is exhaustion, which occurs after a momentum move as opposed to after consolidation. Exhaustion means that previous momentum has exhausted the price action and exhausted the buying or selling that created that momentum move. And that is a also, this is the key, also a large spike in volume in sync with that type of price action. So large volume with starting a new trend versus large volume ending momentum. So it's kind of cool. Um, uh, how I, I, you know, I kind of played mind, mind games with myself to mentally uh, visualize. And that, and that kind of gets back to order flow, right? Because everybody's asking, isn't order flow just a trend? No, it's not. I, I, I trained myself and everybody who worked for me when I had my firm in New York City, it's not just the trend. I want you to visualize, and I'm kind of like speaking to the people on my floor, in my, in, uh, my trading floor. I want you to visualize millions of buy and sell orders going back and forth and how they're reacting on a day-to-day -day basis with price action and volume. And obviously we can cover this a lot more in detail in the, in the coaching program, but um, I want to try and give you as much detail. So maybe, you know, you could, you could work these principles for yourself if, if, if you try to, because it's, it's the whole point is us working together as a community. Right. Um, so anyway, that, that's the reason I don't use moving averages um, in the game planning. I want to have all that information before I go and determine. And then, of course, before I decide to trade, there are two things you need to pay attention to. Then you jump in and say, is it like I, I, it was mentioned today about the 200 period moving average in one, of the post, in one of the questions. Sure, after you have your game plan and you now decide whether you want to be long or short, then you want to go and see, okay, is it near any key moving averages where the majority of traders might make a decision? If it is near the 200, did it just cross above or below the 200? Is it near the 50? Is it near the, you know, that kind of stuff. You need to know that because you need to expect a reaction. A key thing about moving averages, which is a huge part of, of training, is moving averages are where we expect something to happen. It doesn't mean that is definitely going to happen there. It's an average. They tend to become fulfilling prophecies, but it's an average of prices and where you expect. I know there's a lot of trading systems that you know, goes up, pulls back, you buy it at the 20, but there's a, a second piece to that equation is you still need confirmation on price action. You just don't buy it because it pulled back to the 20. You buy it and you get a signal at the 20, not just because it pulled back to the 20. So anyway, I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, some really good feedback. You, you, you're all giving me good feedback to, to reflect back to you the lessons that, um, that I think would be the most impactful, which is kind of the whole point of us working together. Um, you know, I've had some questions about the coaching program. I'm not going to overtly sell it. That's if you want to sign up, I would love to have you in there. Obviously it's, it's incredibly, uh, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for fun really <laughs> is the only word because the same like this, imagine doing this all day during, you know, and, and having interaction like this when the market's open. Um, it's not expensive at all. It's, 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 it's incredibly affordable for the first 30 days. I want you to make a fully informed decision um, to, to see everything. You get access to everything for 30 days at, at, at probably less than what you risk on one trade. Um, so 30 days versus the cost of one trade, you know, it's kind of a no brainer, but uh, again, I, I'm not, that's your, I'll leave a link. If you guys want to take a look, there's a whole listing um, of everything that comes with it. I'll leave a link below today's video. Uh, and if you, if you decide, I, I, you know, it would be awesome. It would be awesome. Um, it, it goes a lot deeper than what we cover here, obviously, and a lot more personal because we can talk one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. But I'm going to answer the questions right now of, of the bunch of stocks that you typed in. Uh, we already mentioned yesterday um, that uh, that line in the sand, the weekly line in the sand, which I believe was 277.14, if I remember correctly from yesterday's video, 
That's the line in the sand. We're still well bid on the weekly charts, but that's the opening price for Monday. As long as we stay above that, we're still going to be a little bit more aggressive on the long side. And, and I want to define aggressive. For me, aggressive means more shares, hold longer, and more positions. It doesn't mean um, only more shares. And, and, when I, when I, and also aggressive means I'm confidently saying my edge is unfolding and I'm trading those shares and those trades with, with conviction. That's the point I want to get across. Um, so that, that's the weekly setup. So I want to cover now um, the individual stocks that I was asked about today. Uh, but first, I just want to take a quick look at the futures, <clears throat> they're a little bit uh, all over the place. We're rallying a little bit, um, but you can see this is actually where we closed uh, yesterday, right? That is uh, right there. So you can see we actually followed through on this little bit of sell-off, but now we're above. But the big thing to pay attention to today is obviously the jobless claims. It's expected to be crazy, uh, but this is interesting here. Some economists say unprecedented surge could be peaking. I think that's a complete guess, quite honestly. I mean, who is not reading the news right now of how long this could possibly continue? I, you know, again, I'm not an economist. I'm a trader. I'm a chart reader. I'm, you know, I just, I look at the charts and put the pieces together. Right now, price action's going up. Don't guess. Pay attention to what's going on right now. We have our line in the sand that tells us what's going on. But really the point is, and this is really the last thing I didn't mention, when you're looking at the moving averages and you have your game plan, okay, that's kind of like the final step. Well, the final, final step is, is, is there any news? Uh, are, are there earnings coming out? Is anything being discussed about the stock? Because that can influence you too. I generally, honestly, I prefer to stay away to when news is about to be announced, such as earnings. I prefer to trade it after the fact and then just watch the order flow in that direction. For me, I find that easier. But again, the news and jobless claims coming out today. Um, so we're going to get into some of the stocks that – uh, we brought up today. Scott called out work today. I actually don't like it until it closes above 30, Scott. Um, you can clearly see here, if we go back to what it was doing prior to the mess, we had the downtrend, the confirmed break of the downtrend, right? So this is technically what I just described as a fuel candlestick. Let's take a look and see if that was confirmed by some larger, oh my gosh, what an example. I swear I didn't, <laughs> I swear I didn't uh, make that up. So that's what fuel looks like, a large bodied candlestick breaking out of a long-term consolidation with large volume associated with it. Um, so I'm going to get volume off there so that we can get back to the charts. Um, so you can see what it was looking like and the price action prior to what happened in the world right now, the global pandemic, but it's getting back up to that level. So Scott, 29 looks like a level that it's having a hard time getting through. Um, I, I use Slack all day. That's actually what we use for the private community and the coaching. Um, so I can speak to, it's, it's a good software, but trading wise, I prefer to wait. It keeps getting above 29 and, and, and getting slapped back down. So for me personally now, I'd be setting an alert for 30, not 29. Why would I want to be involved in all this mess? It keeps failing there. You don't want your lump. Bam, 29. Bam, 29. Bam, 29. And, and it keeps failing. Set it above that level to a level that say, if it gets up there, that's interesting to me. So that 29 level is the area that I'm looking for uh, in that right now. Not, uh, excuse me, 29 is where it's failing. 30 is where I'd be looking to, uh, to get involved there. Uh, next, we actually had Lulu called out. It's not that I actually haven't looked at in a while. Uh, and it's actually got a nice little uh, momentum pause and push again. So this is really what I look for a lot, a push, a pause, a push. This push wasn't very strong. I, I mean, yeah, it was, it was 30 bucks, but compared to what the market did over the last few weeks, um, would like to have seen that a little bit stronger. If I was doing anything in this stock, um, you know, it's just the fact that I went like this, I, I'm not like really loving it. Um, and I guess here, because it's, it's kind of consolidating a little bit and I don't see momentum. I like when there's a nice flow in the market. Uh, this could rally again. I don't know. Uh, for me personally, I don't see enough price action for me to read the tape on. So personally, I, I would kind of stay away from this, whether it goes up or not. Uh, in, in sync with that, um, the same person way pulled out CGC in sync with TLRY in case you missed that the other day, we actually spotted what we thought was kind of interesting accumulation. Look at the increase in volume on the bullish days and the sideways push. So this spike up, let me remove that. Um, the spike up now is spike and sideways. This looks like accumulation is starting here uh, in, in Tilray. So CGC was the 
other one which had a similar type price action. Let's do it live together to see if there's, okay, so the spike in volume is not as dramatic as TLRY, maybe because TLRY is just a little bit more popular. Uh, I don't know. Um, so anyway, we're seeing a, sp a spike, a pause, next move would be up. So I would take a look at these over 16. I wouldn't do anything in CGC right now, but uh, thank you for calling those out and bringing them up to the community, kind of interesting. Uh, Glenn called out Trip Advisor. Uh, Glenn, this is actually a really good example of what I meant that if you just have moving averages in here, you might say, okay, it's definitely in a downtrend, which it is. Uh, there's definitely selling order flow, bearish, order, bearish momentum, trading range, bearish again with the rest of the world. And obviously the sector as well in these types of stocks are going to get hit with what's going on in the world right now, right? But here's the thing. If, if we're in my trading floor and we're game planning together, this is what I'd be doing. I'd be saying that's there. That's there, and I, and I kid you not, this is what I would be saying, exactly what I would say. I'd say, Glenn, call me when it either breaks 15 or 20, and maybe even, what's, what's the low here? 14.67, so I'd say, call me when it breaks 14 or 20, until then, don't bother me. There's no reason to get caught up in this, and again, I've discussed this multiple times, do you trade? the trading range back and forth by support and sell resistance. I don't, I, I, I think you can manage your risk, but that doesn't mean it's a great idea. I want to see something where I definitely think it's moving in a direction, not just going to stop at a particular spot uh, for a new trade. So again, that's how I'd be reading this one. Um, Glenn, I'd be waiting for it to get out of this range. Uh, and then only then would I put on a trade. Uh, I apologize if I say the name wrong. I think it was Siddharth. Uh, asked about URGN, and I want to be completely transparent. I generally don't trade pharmaceutical stocks. Um, I found in my own career, uh, and I'm talking about stock trades. If you want to do with options, it's a whole different animal. Um, I, I don't like to be woken up to um, surprise FDA announcements and, and or somebody suing the company. Uh, and I'll tell you why. There was there, probably back in 2000 three or 2004, something happened with Bausch and Lomb eye drops or contact lenses. I, I don't remember exactly what it was, but we were trading it pretty actively and somebody said the eye drops burned their eyes or something was going on and the stock just got absolutely shellacked. So we were actively in it and, and it was just one of those things where I just decided, it's, and obviously Bausch and Lomb is not a pharmaceutical company, um, but I, I just said anything along those lines, I don't want to be involved with. Um, so I'm sorry, I, I don't have an opinion on this because I don't trade these stocks for that specific reason. Um, and, and that was really it. The last one we talked about was, uh, was um, the moving averages. That was the big thing I wanted to cover. So I just want to reiterate the uh, SPY and what we're looking for today. I'm going to zoom this out a little bit. So the opening price is really what we're looking for, which is 277.14. So you can see we're, st we're still technically well bid. But if that turns red, that now becomes a bearish U-turn. A bearish U-turn typically leads to well offered. So let's see if the tape unfolds and remains bullish, where we can have a little bit more conviction on the long side, or does the weekly chart go bearish U-turn into possibly next week being a well offered candlestick where we might be changing our bias, where the sell shorts might be a little bit better opportunity. Um, we'll see. Don't guess. Let the price action tell us, right? So be safe, everybody. Have an awesome day. Please continue to feel free to leave comments. And specifically, if you'd like me to take a look at a stock, we will definitely review those together. Um, and um, have an awesome day. If you like the videos, it would mean a lot to me if you can click down and um, subscribe. Uh, it's kind of nice to have the community growing together. Um, have a great day, everybody. Be safe.